and we are going to get started. All right. So today we're going to be going over some information about the agent sites. And so to start, I wanted to just uh, begin with uh, where you start off with, which is the consumer tab, which is the very last clickable link on the, on the side over here. And when you go in here, you're going to be dropped into your dashboard for landing pages. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the difference between landing pages and agent sites. So when you look at all my landing pages that I have created, you'll see that all of these, all of these URLs are pages.kw.com. And landing pages are standalone pages that are not connected to your agent site. And so these might be things like listing, uh, listing pages like you see here. Um, okay, I can show you guys an example. Here's a listing page that is a landing page. Notice that it doesn't have the branding that my KW agent site does. It just has the widgets that I have put in. So it's just a standalone site, just like this one, the tech therapy review form, which you guys will get, uh, or you probably already got. I apologize for the mistake I made scheduling the meeting for one o'clock in the morning. It's definitely happening now. Uh, but you guys will get this form so that you can fill out a review of the class. And I'd appreciate if you guys do that after we finish. Uh, but all of these are landing pages. They're not connected to my site versus agent site pages that when I click into this link, you'll see these are the agent site pages that I have. And most likely if you click in here, you're only gonna have these three, about us, contact us, and about me. If you don't have any and you don't have these, that means you need to go through and do your Kelly guide, which if you go to configure site up here or down at the bottom, either one of those will get you to the link to start your Kelly guide and set up these three pages. That's step one to get all of this started if you are showing up with blanks. But from there, you can start creating more pages that are actually connected to your agent site. Uh, for instance, I think I shared with you guys on Facebook, I think I shared this one with you guys. Let's see, the mortgage calculator page that I built. I was messing with it earlier, so hopefully it's working still. Nope, I think I broke it. That's okay, I'll show you guys how to change that a little bit later in the class. All right, let me see here. Perfect. So from there, are there any questions uh, about landing pages versus agent sites? That seems to come up as a confusion for a lot of people. Um, any questions up front before we start actually building any sites? All right. And if at any time that I'm going too fast, or if you guys have a question, just hold down your space bar. That'll turn on your mic as you hold down your space bar and just go ahead and ask your question. I don't mind being interrupted, especially if I'm going too fast or if anybody needs to see something again. Uh, just know this is being recorded. I will get the links up uh, by the end of the weekend. They should be ready to go. So that if you guys wanna go back to this, you can, you can see the recording. All right, so let's start off with landing pages. And to start a new page, you just come over here to create a new site. And then we're gonna be given the option to put it on my agent site, which is your agent site pages, or to create a standalone page, which is your landing pages. And so to start off, we're just gonna start with a landing page and hit create page. Now I'm gonna just create a quick uh, landing page for a listing in the office. So this uh, landing page is 19, uh, let's see, I think it's 1984 West 67th place is the address that I'm gonna do. And so since this one isn't on my website, I do wanna start off by adding some kind of agent branding. And I'm a little bit more uh, prone to use the branded header. It's a little bit smaller, looks a little cleaner. You guys can see it that I just, click on that and drag it right in as a widget. And then the rest of these widgets, you guys can go through, I'm not gonna go through all of them today, 
Uh, but all of these have different functionalities uh, from videos to testimonial capture form. We'll talk a little bit about that most likely later. Um, but this is where you can start building your website. And so I'm gonna just drop in a listing. And then I'm gonna scroll down and then below that, I'm gonna put in a market snap. Let's see, if, there we go. And below that, I'm gonna put in my legal footer. And now all I need to do is configure my widgets down at the bottom. And so I'll click on the top one because that'll make sure that it starts at the first one and hit configure widgets. So the first thing I need to do is- Hello. Hi. Right. First thing I need to do is just put a title up in here, uh, 1980. Yeah, she told me. Let's see here, there we go. Uh, 1984 West 67th, oops, West 67th place. And then you can change around these if you'd like. You're, you're gonna wanna hit save and apply for each widget. So I go through the first widget, I hit save and apply. And then at the top here, I'm gonna hit the over button to go to my next widget. And then drops me into the listing widget. I'm gonna browse the listing. And I'm going to search for this right here, same address, 1984, West 67th Place. Then just hit search. And here's the listing that I want. I can see that's uh, Aaron's listing here. Listing date is 320. Make sure you check the listing date. It will pull up older listings from the same, uh, from the same home or similar addresses like you see here. So just be careful with which one you pick. Make sure it's the one that you want. But all I have to do is hit select. And the only choice I have after that is to choose which image shows up here first. And so maybe I'll just change it to the second one. And then I hit again, save and apply. Give that a second to load. And then we should see the new picture is dropped in. The address has changed, all the info is updated, and then we get this great gallery down here of all the photos, details, and a map. But now we need to set our neighborhood snap. So that one is, let's do a midtown neighborhood. That's the, the neighborhood that this home is in. So midtown neighborhood stats will be my header, and then the Zip code is 80221. Now this part can be a little bit tedious because they, you can't search through here. You just have to go through all the neighborhoods that it has. It's also not in alphabetical order. So it is a little bit time consuming sometimes, but there's the one I want, Midtown. All I have to do is select it and hit save and apply. All right, we're almost done with our landing page. The last one should be our footer, which this information should auto populate in here for you with your DBA logo, uh, all your market center information, as long as you have your marketing profile completely filled out, this will drop in for you. And so all I need to do is hit save and apply. And now I have four of four completed here. And you can see I can hit the back arrow up on the top left. If I wanna go back and edit anything but I'm good with both of these. Save and apply. Now, if I hit the arrow on the top left, the very top left, up in the legal footer, that will bring me back to the widgets page where I can see that I have all of them have green check boxes, which means that all of them have been configured. So I just hit done. And now I can save the landing page or publish the landing page. I'm just gonna go ahead and publish it so that we can see it right away. It's gonna drop us back into that landing page dashboard. And you can see we have our new agent site. Since I published it, it is automatically turned on to active where if you give this link out to anyone, then they can actually go to this link and it is a live link. And so there's our landing page for our listing. Uh, some other things that you might wanna put in here, you could add in maybe down at the bottom, you could add in the lead form. 
possibly. And say you look at that and you want to come in and edit this page. All I need to do on a landing page, it's really easy. I just come in and click edit after clicking the three dots at the end of the page on the dashboard. So now I come in here, give it a moment to load, and now I'm just going to add in the lead form. So maybe I want to be able to have people contact me if they'd like to schedule a showing, maybe. And so I'm going to scroll down to where I want to put it, and I want to put it right between the new market snap and the legal footer. And so I grab the lead form, and I come in, and I do you guys see that green bar that shows up? That's where it's telling me it's going to go. So if I pull it down here, it's going to go below the widget. If I pull it up higher, it'll go above. But I want to put it right in between, so I'll drop it when the green bar is in between. And there it drops in my lead form. I hit publish page again, and yes. And now when we go back to that same page and click the link, we should have it load up with our lead form before the footer. Let's see, and there it is. And so if they do fill out a lead on these pages, it will automatically drop into your command as a new lead and so that you'll get all this information that they fill out the note will be left in their contact timeline as the first uh it'll be the first thing in their timeline after the source of where it came from and so this is a great way to just create quick pages i use these for like open houses in the past um you guys might want to use them instead of an open house you might create a uh, like a, a webinar for a new home buyer webinar and maybe use this for registration. And you could create a registration page here, changing instead of interested, let's talk, you could put register below. Uh, maybe do something like that on the landing page, maybe add a video about what you're uh, gonna talk to them about, maybe your COVID-19 um, digital buyer plan, something like that, anything like that. You know, there's the, really the possibilities are endless. All right, I'm just pausing real quick for questions while I get ready Steven, to talk. I've got one. Uh, could On that landing page, could you add a video widget? I've been having real trouble getting it to load like my uh, YouTube links with video tours. I can get the widget in there, but nothing's loading. So are you, let's see, so just to keep everybody on the same page, Son is talking about, you're talking about it on a landing page, correct? Correct. Okay, so a standalone page, and he's talking about using the video widget right here, correct, Sean? Yes, and that, as I load in links, that is what it looks like, even after I publish it and save the page. Gotcha, and on here, are you uploading the video, or are you using a URL? URL, straight from YouTube. Straight from YouTube. So. On, for landing pages specifically, I think it's a little easier to drop in an embedded link, which I'm going to show you guys how to do um, in just a minute here. And so what I'm going to show you guys with the mortgage calculator, Sean, you can actually do the same thing with a video. And I will also show you guys how to do that. And I found that it works a little bit better that way of dropping okay. in an embedded like HTML link instead of trying to use this specific widget, because I've also found that this widget I don't like the placement as much. I don't like the size of it, all that. And so I, I prefer to use the other, the other method. And so I'll show you guys that. Uh, Thank you. Right here as we start setting up this next site. Yeah, great question. Thank you, Sean. All right. So now agent sites are a little different when we're creating these because they are connected to our .kw.com website. And so all of these pages that have the lit up green eyes are the active pages on my site. And so those are the pages that when you click on your website, show up in the drop down box. And so the green eyed pages that you guys saw, oh, here, uh, screen's just a little bit off on its size. Let me resize it a bit. There we go. So that should look the way that you guys are used to. And then here's all of my different pages on here. And one thing that I have learned that seems like a limitation for you guys for the future to hopefully avoid some headaches, you need to keep this page under 10. 
Uh, all the pages will stick around. Let's see. Robert Gallegos, will you mute your uh, will you mute your yourself, please? Thanks, buddy. Here we go. All right, sorry about that, guys. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into creating a page, and then I'll go and show you guys how to edit or how to well, so first how to add the page into your your actual agent site, and then we will. I'll show you how to edit the page because that's when it kind of gets a little bit tricky with uh, dealing with command. So the first thing that I'm gonna do to create a new agent site is the same thing I started before, but now I'm gonna click on on my agent site. And so I'll click create page. And we're gonna build the more mortgage calculator. And I'm just going to label this one V3, just so I know the difference between my other ones that I had in there. A couple of them had a similar name. So I just want to make sure this is the one that I want. And so here you'll see that we don't have any more options uh, to brand this page. And the reason is because the branding already shows up on the top of the website up here. So we don't need to actually code that in. And so now we just need to select the widgets that we want to use uh in in our page and i think one of the cool features that i like is that i can still use some of these other widgets but i don't have to use the agent profile for an agent profile all i'm going to use here is that i know i have a picture at the top a couple opportunities to change some title text and then a big text body here and some contact info at the bottom and so when i come in and i I'm going to configure this widget now so I can change some of this information. And so here, this is my mortgage calculator page. And so maybe I wanna change this photo out and put in maybe a Keller Williams mortgage one or really any other, any picture that might be mortgage related. Uh, for fun, we're gonna put in Carlos's face. And I'll change my page title to Mortgage Calculator. Or, uh, rolling Company. And so this is the text here, which you can put in something that's a little bit you know, more detailed. You can also just hit a space bar and leave it blank. If you just want to leave it as Mortgage Calculator at the top uh, and nothing below that, you can just put a space and it will take just a space or you can come in and write, um, you know, see what you will qualify for in this, uh, in maybe the current, something like that, nothing crazy. Down in here in this bio title, I am gonna take this one out because now, instead of putting a biography in here, this is where I'm gonna drop my HTML. And so one thing that can be helpful for you guys, if you see in the corner here, you're gonna get a pull down option that you can make this a little bit bigger so you can see the text a little easier in this pane. But I'm just gonna get rid of that. And so if I wanna bring in a video from YouTube, all I need to do is go into a YouTube page and then on this share button right here, you can hit share. And then you're looking for this embed emblem right here. And it's gonna give you the exact code that you need to embed the video into the website. Oh wait, sorry. We wanted to do the, the calculator. So one thing that you guys might wanna write down, I'm gonna put it in the chat right now, is this website here, mortgagecalculator.org. And when you get to this website, you're gonna to come to this last little widgets tab and you're gonna pull down to the full page calculator. In here, we're looking for the same embedding code. And so here, you can see what it looks like. This is what it will pull up as. 
And the code to do it is right in here. And so you can see on the website, I can just hit copy to clipboard. I can select that. And now it's on, it's just like I hit control C or if I went to right click and hit copy, it's now in my clipboard. So I come back to command. And in this agent bio text field, I'm just gonna hit paste. It's gonna drop in that embedded link for me. And now I just need to finish editing this bottom piece. And if everything works, which hopefully it did, I hit save and apply. And it should update everything right here. So there's Carlos, mortgage calculator. The reason that I like using this widget is you guys see how it automatically centers everything into the page. Also, when I use the widget, when I come up here at the top, at the top far left of the window, I can select desktop mobile, or sorry, desktop tablet or mobile. So you can see what it'll look like on a tablet or a phone. The phone one seems like it is a little bit more narrow than it should be. I'm not sure why. It used to look a little bit better. But I usually like to design in the, in the desktop view. But that's it, guys. We hit save changes. And yes, and now it's gonna drop us in to our agent site pages dashboard. And so we have this mortgage calculator V3. And you can see that my eye is grayed out, which means that this is not an active page. This is not on my website anywhere. It's only existing in my command right now. And this is the most probably difficult part to do is this section right here. So please guys, I'm gonna try and go slow, make sure that you're listening. Because all this will be for nothing if you don't know how to do this, like fairly kind of, it seems there's a lot of steps to do something really simple. So I'm gonna try and go slow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the mortgage calculator V3 page to my current website. To do that, I'm gonna come up here to site and app settings. And from site and app settings, I'm then going to go to site pages. Now, I already have the mortgage calculator page created on my site, which is why you guys see it down at the bottom here in my menu. So if you already have the page created, you would come in here and hit select page. But I'm going to just show you guys real quick how to add a page. The next thing we do is just select the page that I want, Mortgage Calculator V3, and I hit continue. Now you'll see I have new page is my last one at the bottom, and I need to update this information so that it will show up. The page title is what's gonna show up in the drop-down box. So whatever I want to have it show up here, that's what I'm gonna put in right here. So let's call this one maybe a buyer calculator. And the URL slug will give a, a new slug there, uh, buyer calc. And then my SEO description in these guys, I would recommend just trying to write a sentence that describes the page and uses keyword phrases that are appropriate for the page. So buyer calculator, I might uh, write something as um, home mortgage um, estimates calculator for new home buyers, something like that. Uh, your goal is kind of to take phrases that might be something that somebody searches and write it into a sentence, use it into a sentence to try and help attract buyers that are searching on Google uh, into pages that are, you know, your pages instead of just those, those top ones. All right, so from here, all I need to do is hit save page changes. Don't forget, I'm really bad at forgetting to hit that. And if you don't, nothing happens and you'll get frustrated. So remember to hit save page changes. And now if I refresh my page, I should have a new menu item called buyer's calculator. And now we should be able to jump into that page. So it's almost perfect. You guys see how this little bit is popping up here at the top? I don't want that there. 
But otherwise, this looks like it seems functional. So now you can send people here. This is part of my website now. So anybody who comes to my website has access to this page. Uh, one thing that I do like to add on to here as well, if I'm gonna put this page up here, is add another one of those lead forms at the bottom of this page just by dragging in that, uh, that other widget below the widget that we did here. And you can add a lead form just so that if anybody wants to contact you there, they can instead of coming to the contact us form which you should have already set up. That is just this basic lead gen form. Steven, can you show how to add something to that existing page, please? Sure, yes. And it's, uh, it's an even bigger pain. This is the hardest part of running your agent site right now, is editing a page on the agent site. So let's do that. So now the first ringer that it's gonna throw you for is we're actually gonna start in uh, designs to do this. So this is the only part that you have to leave the consumer application to do. So you're gonna to go to designs. Then I'm gonna double click on mortgage calculator V3. Uh, if you're having trouble finding your page, come up here and just hit agent site pages. So it filters everything out except for your site pages. And so that makes it a little easier to find some of the old ones. You can see I have 46 in here, because this is kind of your your cache of all of your old ones that have existed. You saw in that, in that dashboard, I only had seven, but in here I have 46 old pages because this is where they all, it's like the, the archive of all of your old pages. But to get in here, I just have to click on this and then it's gonna drop me right back into my editor. Now, when you guys make this page, it's automatically gonna create a new page that's gonna be non-visible on your site and keep the original page on there, even though I'm editing this one. And so my suggestion is make sure you change the name first thing to a new version. So I changed this one to V4. So I know that it is the, the newest version that I'm gonna be editing. All right, and so if I wanna add in that lead form, let's see, so I wanna put in the contact form here drag in my widget, there it is. All right, I need to configure that widget before, let's see, contact. Uh, yep, yeah, that looks good here. You do have some more options where you can edit like the message in here, uh, where it might be more appropriate to change what this placeholder says to encourage people to type a message. You can change that around. You can change the contact info. If you'd like, you can see the office number is what I have here. I'm gonna change that to my cell and hit save and apply. All right, I'm gonna hit save changes. And so now I've changed the web page, but if you look on here and I hit refresh, nothing's gonna be different. Oh, I think we need to go over to the, the buyer calc page, sorry. But you'll see on here that the lead form isn't gonna be on here. Let's see, nothing down there. And so what we need to do now is we have to go back into the agent site page and you'll, let's see, give it a second. Here we go. So now we see this new page is there, but we see that the I is grayed out again. And here this I is, still green so v3 is still the active page and so i go into site and app settings back to site pages and now next to the buyer calculator page i'm going to click on the three dots and i'm going to hit select page and now i'll scroll down oh so this is the error that I was telling you guys about earlier. You see how the new page isn't showing up anymore. Well, it's because I have too many pages. For some reason, 10 is the limit to show up here, which is why you don't want to have more than 10. So what I need to do is go cancel, go back to my agent site page, and try and pick one that is grayed out so that you don't delete an active page. Because if you delete an active page, then it deletes it out of your agent site pages, and you have to start from scratch on that page. And so here I'm gonna pick this grayed out one, 
delete it, delete page. Uh, now I have 10 total. I can see 10, one of 10 of 10 at the bottom. So now that when I go back into site and app settings, then site pages, now I should be able to click on my page selection. And the last one there, now V4 fits in as my 10th option. I hit continue. And this is where I always forget. And now you need to hit save page changes. Now everything else gets to stay the same, but now when we come back to this page and hit refresh, we should have our contact form at the bottom. All right, let me take a quick pause on command. And does anybody have any questions? That was a lot to get to go over. I know that's the most difficult part of agent sites is editing them for different errors. Landing pages, you don't have to do all that. You can, again, remember, you can just go in and click the three dots and edit those. But any questions up to this point? Uh, can you show me again um, which link you copy? Which link to copy for the mortgage link? The mortgage yes. calculator? Yes. Yes, no please. Problem. So the, it's over in the chat. If you go to that website over there, the mortgagecalculator.org, which let's just jump to the homepage. From the homepage, you're going to go over to the very last one. Let's see here and hit full page calculator here. Let me just uh, share your share my screen again. So here we go from the home page. If we hover over and click widgets, we'll get full page calculator. And then about halfway down the page, you'll see the code in here. And all I need to do is just hit copy to clipboard and it grabs all of this for me. And that's what I pasted into the text box. All right. Thank you. Got it. No problem. No problem. Any other questions, guys? All right. Since we don't have any questions, we're doing great on time, guys. And so now I wanted to show you guys a little bit, um, a little bit more of some advanced uh, stuff you can do beyond just what we saw there. When you still have the option on your agent site page to not have to use widgets. So if you want to get out of the widgets, you can build a page completely from scratch. And I'm going to show you like one reason that I might do that uh, would be sometimes the videos do show up a little bit better that way. So let's create a new site and let's create one completely from scratch. And you can do all of this. So with the URLs and the embedded links, all that works on landing pages as well. So if you want to do a landing page, you can do the same thing that we just did with embedding the mortgage calculator into a landing page, just like we did on the agent site. So just know that we can do places. And so what you're learning through here, you can do it in both both places. So, but we're going to start with um, on my. Actually, we're going to do a landing page because it'll be a little bit faster to to show you guys what it looks like. So, if I want to get out of using the actual widgets that this comes with, I do need to put in one. So, I almost always throw in my branded header if I'm doing a if I'm doing a landing page, I always throw in my branded header. If I'm doing a agent site, I always throw in the agent footer. And so one of those will always be on there. Just it, uh, command always wants one of their widgets on here. And then from there, I can start building my website. Now this is where it does get a little bit more uh, kind of advanced and techy, but don't get, don't get too 
uh, nervous, guys. It, it's pretty easy. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to build our layout. And so I just want to put a video in here and I want to center the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a section which builds a table or excuse me, a cell for whatever I want to put in here. So you can see that the branded header is its own cell. And now I have a second cell that I just put in. And what I want to put into that cell, I'm going to go to content blocks to find. So once again, let me do that a little slower. The first thing I added in was a cell. And I can delete those by just clicking on the cell and deleting it. But I went to layout blocks, section, one section. These other ones, like a half section, just makes two areas that you can go that splits the screen evenly. But I just want one in here. And now I have my cell. And inside, I put my content blocks. So here, I want to actually drop in a text into there. And so you can see if I put it any lower or somewhere else, it's not going to go inside that cell. But when my green bar shows up in that orange box, I know it's in there. And I'm going to drop it in there. Now, here's the trick to center this. While I'm still clicked on the cell, I'm going to come over here to the paintbrush. And when I click the paintbrush, I'm going to get these three different options. And I'm going to click the typography option. And I'm going to come down to text align. And I'm going to center that text. And you see it jumped over. And what it's really doing is it's centering the actual text box in the cell. And so now I can jump out of here. And now I actually want to edit my text. And I'm going to put in my YouTube link. So I go to a YouTube page that I want to share. I come down to the share button and I click embed. YouTube is really nice. It actually gives you some options that will update the code for you. You can start it at a different point if you'd like. Um, but all you have to do is come in here, 560 by 315, cool. And let's see here. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And all I have to do is just hit copy again and it'll grab that text. And so I come in here, I'm gonna highlight all that text and now I'm just gonna hit control V or to paste that same, in, same text in there. Now, one thing that you guys might end up playing with are the width and the height. My advice on that is make sure that you keep the ratio the same. And so you will probably have to do a little math to get that figured out if you want it to be, uh, so you guys know your full frame on the website is 1600 pixels across. And so I run a lot of videos at 850 by 450 on mine. That is the same ratios as it comes. So it keeps it the correct rectangle, but it just makes it a little bigger. I will say I've run into issues on the landing pages specifically that when I've resized a video, it doesn't show up. But on my agent site, uh, I have not seen the same errors that say when we, the market update page that I made, this one I did change the dimensions of the video on and it, and it worked fine on my agent site. So just be aware if you do start changing the dimensions, uh, it can screw some things up, but uh, just be patient and change it back or just start over if, if you end up having to. But there, now I'm gonna leave this the same because it is on a landing page. Like I said, it was giving me trouble before. Um, video, sample, and now we can do some fancier stuff here. Like I said, guys, uh, I might want to come in here and add some text underneath the video. So maybe I want to come in and put a layout section that is the one thirds. And I'll put that right below there. And so now it gives me three cells that are evenly spaced across here to fill with different content blocks. And so I could maybe put in uh, some text in this middle one, fill out the text there. Now you can also come in here, which this is a little bit buggy, I will admit that, but you can use these layout blocks for the widgets that they give us. And so 
some of these look great in a smaller section. Some of them look terrible. And so I would play around with them to see what it looks like. Like I really do like the market snap in a smaller version. I think it looks a little bit better like this. And so that's when I will put in to these here uh, where it's a little different. I'm gonna delete this one out just so I can show you guys what it looks like. Uh, let's throw the listing in next to it and let's put in the local expert after that. And so before I can publish this page, I do have to configure my widget. Let's see, save too early. Now this is an error that I have come across before where it just does getting stuck. And unfortunately, if you haven't saved the web page before, there's a good chance that you lost the work that you did. And so that is a huge bummer. It looks like we lost this, but I can come in here and refresh the page and it's gonna ask me to reload the site. And sometimes it will reload with some stuff in here. Most of the time it will reload as a blank page if you have not saved it already, which looks like that's what it's gonna do to me. Bummer. All right, let's see if I can build that really quick for you guys, at least to show you the video. All right, let's center that text back there. And I won't try and get fancy this time, just publish the page. So I didn't publish the page, my mistake. I just need to give a title here. <clears throat> um, video example. And then that updates my header. And now I should be able to publish my page. Say yes. And then now, There's my video. Uh, one reason that I also like using the, the text like this, Sean, to your question earlier, is that it puts that thumbnail in there for you when you use the YouTube uh, embed, whereas the other one will just show them a blank screen with the YouTube play button on it, and it doesn't show anything behind it. And so I do like the embedded code with this, and it's, I do like that they can click out of it from your, your site, they can come in here. Um, I thought there, yeah, there we go. So if they hover over your name, they can also subscribe right there to you, to your YouTube channel. And so another way to get people in as leads. So I definitely like this. But like I said, you guys can build out a lot more in these websites. Um, if, if you're willing to go in there and really get down with all those layout and content blocks, just know that that is still kind of a growing part of our website builder and so it doesn't work perfectly all the time i go through a, a lot of stuff with different agents that are trying to build these out and it's very much like hey here's this is happening can we fix it and so be patient with these if you want to stick to just the widgets that's a great starting point that's what they're there for you don't need to start with fancy content blocks and splitting your screen into different areas start simple get some different web pages built let me know if I can help you, especially with connecting those agent sites or editing any of those pages. I know it's a, a, it's a little difficult, but once you do it, you know, 10, 20, 30 times, you'll get the hang of it. All right. Let's see, guys, we have about 15 minutes left. So I'd just like to open it up for any kind of questions. It can be questions about uh, this stuff or maybe another thing popped into your head while we were sitting here in class today. Uh, what other questions do you guys have that I can help out with? Hey, Steven, you said you're going to um, record this video. Are you going to be able to share it with us or? Yes. Uh, so it'll take me a couple of days just to get the video ready. 
but I'll have it on the the KW the KW downtown YouTube page. I'll have it up there, and then I'll give you guys. I'll send out the link for it on Facebook and stuff so that you guys can can just link to it from there. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. I have, I, I do have one more thing that I know Sean asked about on Facebook was the testimonial pages. Sean, what was going on with your testimonial page? Sure. So to what I've been trying to figure out to put all of my past testimonials onto the page, I have a testimonial page where you can, anybody can enter a testimony for me. And I have a testimonial carousel page where I expected they would show up once I enter them. But once I did one, it's, I, it's not showing up anywhere. So I've got a blank testimonial carousel page. Has anybody put a review into your uh, testimonial capture page? No. And so I was going, I was going back and grabbing old ones to put them in myself. Have you done that yet? I did one and it didn't show up anywhere. So I didn't want to do more and then like have them randomly do, hmm. do something that I wasn't expecting. So as long as you, you're, you're using the, the widget, correct? So I'll show yes. you what I have set up. So the testimonial page guys, what he's talking about, you have to create a landing page. That is the capture page. The, land, the actual capture page is not part of your website, but then you're gonna get this form that you see here, which it looks a lot like the lead form but it has this little star piece here and uh, the review that they can actually write is worded a little differently. And then it'll also have this, uh, would you recommend uh, statement down here? So it's a little different, but you have to create one of these. And then once you create one of these, it will drop into, excuse me. It's actually the easiest way to show you guys is just by opening up the agent site. And so now Sean, you went in here and then you grabbed the testimonial carousels is the one you wanted to use. And so we drag that one in. And when we go to configure this widget for everyone else, now we have some different options of how we can configure this widget. We can say, how do we want their name to show up in here? But then I can also select testimonials that have inputted from before. So when I go to browse testimonials, you can see that there are a few different ones in here from previous testimonials that have come in. Now, I don't really want these on there anymore. I thought I took them off. And so you can only select, I believe, three. But let me double check with that number. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, only three that you can select. So let me take this one off and hit continue. And so now I have these three options here. And all I have to do is hit save and apply. Well, so while that's thinking, Sean, um, I would just try again with making sure that when you when you're coming in, go to browse your testimonials and see if it's showing up there. If it's not even showing up there, because you do have to come in and select them in here first. Um, let's see if I can show you what it would look like on your page. Let's see. But yeah, I thought it would show up with another one here since I didn't have the third one selected, but uh, just check, try again on another one. You can also send me the page and I can send, I'll try again from my computer as well and just send you a review, see if we can get it all connected. But so I've got to have reviews existing before I can create the page, correct? Oh, uh, okay. Yep. So you can go back in and edit the page like I showed you before, but really now you know from what we just talked about that when you go edit a page, it's really just making a copy of the same page and creating a new one from the basis of that one that you're copying or editing. And so once you do it and do that new page or edit that one, 
it will be able to update with the new testimonials that have been put in that you can then select and add them in. So as if I direct future people to add a testimonial on my website, it won't automatically show up like fresh to a new page. Like, Hey, here's a new review. It, I'll, nope. It'll just be three that I've selected. Correct. That's it now. And so for uh, just everybody's sake, I do think these testimonial pages actually were working maybe, maybe a month ago. And so they are still pretty new to be, I think they will expand to where what Sean is talking about, where this stuff will drop in and update automatically for you. Then I think that's where we're headed with it. But these are very preliminary stages for you guys to be able to use this to get some stuff up there. Now, if you want to on your website, it is a little bit more labor intensive. We're working towards what Sean was saying, but it'll be a little bit of time. Um, if you guys use, I don't know if Zillow will do this, but I have heard that Yelp does this that you can find that same embed code um, links on Yelp reviews for yourself that and then you can do the same thing where you can drop in Yelp reviews on your page by putting in those uh, iframe or the embedded code that you can do that and so maybe if you guys have Zillow reviews you could try that Facebook does have some embed options when you guys are using this so you can share Facebook videos um, in the same way by using that embed and so anytime you guys want to share something, look for, look for that embed uh, option right here. And with Facebook, they give you some options as well. I don't know if this will work. Here we go. You can include the post if you would like in, in the embedding. But look, just look for that. It's usually buried under a share button. Uh, on certain websites, you might be able to find it. If any of you guys are more HTML inclined, there are ways to kind of rip HTML off of sites that you want to use and then drop them into these. Uh, that's more of a personal conversation that we can have and work together on that if anybody's interested. But I, I think that is all I have for you guys. Let me just think for one second. There's no more questions. All right, there's one more thing I wanted to mention since you guys are still no questions. Hey, Steven. Yes. Are you going to do videos like this or classes like this once a week or every other week? Or uh, So I do a class on Mondays, which is usually a little bit like lower level, a little bit more intro level into command. And then Thursdays is the, the higher level class. So Mondays at two, Thursdays at one. Every week. All right. So one thing I, I kind of glossed over at the beginning in the consumer page is we had landing pages, agent sites, and the guide builder. Now the guide builder is the only part in here that's connected to your app in consumer, but this is where you can go and edit your buying and selling guides. In the future, there will be more guides available outside just buy, sell, uh, but this is where you can come in and if you look on your app, when people are in your app and they click on the guide down at the bottom, Let's see if I can pull mine up. Here we go. Oops, my virtual background won't let you see my phone. But when you pull up the guide, this is what they'll see if they're assigned to you. And the cool thing about this is it's completely customizable. So you guys can come in, change the order, just click on it, and then you can come in here, edit a picture, maybe add in something that's a little bit more your brand, or maybe add in pictures that are branded to you. Um, but then mostly you can come in here and edit the text. Where I've seen a lot of people get creative with this stuff where when it when they put in their home inspection one well this is where they're going to put in inspector number one two and three that they recommend with their phone number information all that they put it all into their guide same thing with homeowners insurance uh, home warranty maybe you're like uh, no I don't like home warranties I don't want to do those so I'm just going to delete it in here you can really customize your buyer's guide of if they look in here and want to see what's going on, they can really get an idea of how your business operates. You can add more. You're not just stuck with the number in there. You can add plenty more. Uh, and then you have your introduction, which is what will actually just show up, uh, I believe, on your guide on the phone if they go into, I'm actually not sure where this shows up in the, in the app. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, the guide is the last part that 
it's pretty self-explanatory when you guys want to go in and edit it. Like I said, you just click on the guide you want to edit, the pencil at the end, selling guide, and all we have to do is we can move those around by grabbing the tab or just click on the tile, and that's how you get into the editing pane. All right, everybody. That is all I had for you. That is the consumer tab through and through. Uh, I hope that you guys schedule some time with me personally, if you would like. We can, I can help you build the sites out or, or work on issues that your, your sites are having, anything like that. Um, I really love troubleshooting. I'm, I have to say I'm not like the utmost expert on HTML or building websites or anything like that, but I'm definitely willing to help and willing to help other people out. A lot of the times I'll meet with people or they'll ask me a question and then two days later they'll get a Zoom video in their inbox and it will be the solution to the problem that we talked about a couple of days ago. And it's a minute long video because it ends up being something real simple usually that I can just be like, oh, it was just this, click here, click here, click here, and then you guys get the video. So please utilize me, I love helping you guys out. Um, Calendly link is in the chat. Otherwise, guys have a great day. You're welcome, Fabian.